Sutra, countless millions of gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits from the Saha world and other worlds also gathered in the palace of the Chayashimsha heaven. They came from the heaven of the four kings, the Chayashimsha heaven, the Suyama heaven, the Tushita heaven, the blissful transformations heaven, and the heaven of comfort gained through others' transformations. They came from the heaven of the multitudes of Brahma, the heaven of the ministers of Brahma, the heaven of the great Brahma Lord, the heaven of lesser light, the heaven of limitless light, the heaven of light sound, the heaven of lesser purity, the heaven of limitless purity, and the heaven of universal purity. Commentary. Earlier, the Buddha emitted limitless clouds of great light and proclaimed various kinds of dharma sound so that living beings would turn away from confusion and return to enlightenment, forsake deviants and return to the proper. Now there is the Saha world. Saha is a Sanskrit word for bearing patience or extreme suffering, which is in contrast to the western land of ultimate bliss. The world in the west is extremely blissful, while this world of ours is extremely painful. This is also called bearing patience. Because living beings can bear to be patient with this kind of pain, countless millions of gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits from the Saha world and lands in other worlds as opposed to the Saha world, also gathered in the palace of the Chayashimsha heaven, the palace of the heaven of 33. They came from the heaven of the four kings. The four kings are also called the four kings who protect the world. The heaven of the four kings is situated in the center of Mount Sumeru. The Chajashrimsha heaven is at the top of Mount Sumeru. Each of the four directions of this heaven has a heavenly king. The heavenly king in the east is the heavenly king who upholds nations. The heavenly king in the south is the heavenly king of growth. The heavenly king in the west is the heavenly king huge eyes, while the heavenly king in the north is the heavenly king of erudition. Beings in the heavens where the four great heavenly kings reside in joy of 500 year life, of which one day and one night is equivalent to 50 years on earth. The heaven of the four kings is closest to us. They watch over to see who are doing good or evil in the human realm. This is the heaven of the four kings. The Chajashimsha heaven, we have already explained earlier that the Sanskrit word Chajashimsha means the heaven of the 33. The Lord of the heaven of the 33 is also called capable of being God. The Suryama heaven is a place where neither sunlight or moonlight reaches. So, is it a dark place? No, all the beings in the Suryama heaven radiate a light from their bodies so they do not need sunlight or moonlight. How can this heaven is called the Suryama heaven? Suryama is again a Sanskrit word that means fine divisions of time. Because this heaven is so high that neither sunlight nor moonlight can reach it. So they tell time by the blooming and closing the lotuses. It is day when the lotuses bloom and night when the lotuses shut. The length of life in the Tushita heaven is 1000 years, of which one day and night is equivalent to 100 years on earth. The length of life in the Suryama heaven is 1500 years, and the highest, the highest of beings there is one and a half months. Heavenly beings in the Chayashimsha heaven are one mile in height and beings in the heaven of the four kings are half a mile in height. The length of life increases by 500 years and 
the height of being increases by half a mile for every layer of heaven. The higher the heaven, the longer the life of beings is there. The Tushita heaven. This is also Sanskrit and means contentment. This is the heaven of contentment. There are inner and outer courts in the Tushita heaven. The inner court is where my Chaya Bodhisattva now lives. The outer court is where most heavenly beings dwell. The three forms of disasters cannot reach the inner court of the Tushita heaven, but the outer court of the Tushita heaven will be destroyed by the three forms of disasters. The blissful transformations heaven enjoys a happiness that comes forth transformationally, and the heaven of comfort gained through others' transformations. Joy in this heaven comes forth transformationally, from other heavenly beings. They transfer the joys of other heavens to this heaven with their spiritual powers. Heavenly demons, not real spirits or gods, live in the heaven of comfort gained through others' transformations. They are both for other six desire heavens, the heaven of the four kings, the Trajashimsha heaven, the Suryama heaven, the Tushita heaven, the blissful transformations heaven, the heaven of comfort gained through others' transformations. Why are these heavens the six heavens of desire? Heavenly beings still have lust and impure thoughts. When I was lecturing on the Suragama Sutra during the summer, I talked about these six desire heavens already. I believe none of you enjoyed it, so I, you returned it to me, so I am giving it to you again now. The beings of the six desire heavens have lost beings in the heaven of four kings and Chajashimsha heaven engaged in lust similar to human beings. How come? They all have a physical form. The beings in the heaven of four kings and the Chajashimsha heaven also marry. They are couples and father and son relationships. What size is a newborn in a heaven of four kings? The same size as a five-year-old in the human realm. And in the Chajashimsha heaven, the same size as a seven-year-old in the human realm. A newborn in the Suryama heaven is the same size as a ten-year-old in the human realm. Newborns in this size come out and sit on the knees of heavenly beings. Once they are born, they were to eat a kind of natural celestial dew that form spontaneously. After they are done, they become the size of heavenly beings, which is a half a mile in height and 500 years in the length of life. This is the heaven of four kings. As it is said, the heaven of four kings and the Chajashimsha heaven engage in desire through embrace. Sexual activity in the heaven of the four kings and the Chajashimsha heaven is the same as the human realm. Suryama through hand holding and Tushita through smiling. Sexual activity between men and women in the Suryama heaven occurs simply by holding hands. The same way Westerners greet each other by shaking hands, for example. This gesture is enough to count as sexual activity between couples in their heavens. This is the Suryama heaven. And the Tushita heaven, men and women engage in sexual activity just by smiling at each other. Heavenly beings of that place do not smile usually. Why? Their emotional desire is very light, nearly none. In the six desire heavens, the higher the heaven, the lighter the desire. How come we people have to eliminate desire and cut off love as we cultivate? Why do we want to be free of thoughts of desire? It is because the more thoughts of desire we have, the more delusions we have. The fewer thoughts of desire, the more wisdom we develop. Thoughts of desire belong to the evil world of five turbidities. What are turbidities? Thoughts of desire are mustard and unclean. 
design in the heaven of the four kings is the same as emotions and designs in the human realm. Compare the Chajashim Sha heaven to the heaven of the four kings. It is still lighter and lost only requires shaking hands. Suryama so through hand holding and Tushita through smiling. I have already talked about this during the summer. Let me explain it again. If I do not, you all forget. The heaven of four kings and the Chajashimsha heaven engage in desire through embrace, Suryama so through hand holding, and Tushita through smiling. Bliss from transformations through long stares, and bliss from others through glances. These are the joys of design in the six heavens. They just smile at each other in the Tushita heaven. We people think smiling is a good thing. Smiling is not good. There is desire in smiles. When you get to the heaven of Suyama, people wish to cultivate and work hard. Very few people shake hands. Shaking hands is equivalent to sexual activity between couples. In the Tushita heaven, this consists of smiling at each other. In the heaven of bliss from transformations, this consists of long stares between men and women. Long, maybe one minute or five minutes. To just look at each other for as long as one or two minutes. In the bliss of others' transformations, a quick glance will do it. No need to look long. This is the way sexual behavior between men and women work in the six desire heavens. The higher the heaven, the lighter the desire is. If your desires were heavy, you would not become born in the heavens either. When you are in those heavens, you do not have much desire. This is the joy from desire in the sixth desire heavens. There are three heavens in the first dhyana, three heavens in the second dhyana, the three heavens in the third dhyana. The three heavens of the first dhyana are the heaven of the Brahma Mantitus, the heaven of the ministers of Brahma, and the great Brahma heaven. They came from the heaven of the Mantitus of Brahma. What is Brahma? Brahma means purity. Thoughts of design in the first dhyana heaven are even lighter, so it is said to be Brahma. The Brahma Mantitus heaven refers to how all the heavenly beings living there are all pure. These are the heavenly citizens of the Brahma heaven. The heaven of the ministers of Brahma. These are ministers in the heavens who came to their positions because of purity. They assist the great Brahma Lord. The heaven of the great Brahma Lord is where the great Brahma Lord lives. He is someone who works very hard at his cultivation, but he only knows to cultivate heavenly blessings and has not become enlightened or certified to the fusion. After cultivating to a point, he became born in the heavens and became a great Brahma Lord. The great Brahma Lord has the multitudes of Brahmas and the Brahma ministers supporting him. These are the three heavens of the first dhyana. The three heavens of the first dhyana are called the ground of bliss, of the bliss from living production. Leaving the cycle of birth and death behind, it is quite a delightful place. When we work enough to reach the state of the first dhyana, we can see the great Brahma Lord, the ministers and pupils of the great Brahma heaven. When you reach the first dhyana heavens, your pound stops as you meditate. For most of us, we are dead if our pounds quit. You are in this state where your pounds and blood flow stop because your inherent nature has reached the first dhyana heavens. This is not because you are dead, but because you entered the first dhyana samadhi. This may occur for an hour, two hours, three hours, five hours, or a day. Two days, three days, five days, ten days, twenty days. Although your pulse does not move, the body does not deteriorate. For most of us, average people after death, our costs begin to stink after seven days. If you can work hard so that you reach this state, then your body will not deteriorate no matter how long you are in samadhi. This is about the three heavens of the first dhyana. 
the three heavens of the second jhana are the heaven of lesser light, the heaven of limitless light, the heaven of light sound. How can we become reborn in the heavens? Eliminate desire and end love. So there is no lust. With lust, we cannot become reborn in the heavens. Each heaven is one level higher than the one below. One heaven is higher than another is because it has less desire. The heavens of the second jhana include the heaven of blessed light. Heavenly beings here have asuras that are brighter than the lights in the Suryama heaven. At the same time, among the three heavens of the second jhana, the lights of the heaven of lesser light is comparatively weaker than the other two heavens. How come there is a light? It is because they kept the precepts purely or focused on keeping the precepts in particular when they were pupil. Those in the heaven of the multitudes of Brahma and heaven of the ministers of Brahma also observe the precepts but not so well. They are pure but they do not emit light. Those in the heaven of lesser light not only keep the precepts well but emit a light. This is why they became born in this kind of heaven. The heaven of limitless light. The one earlier was lesser light. This light is limitless and boundless. Above the heaven of limitless light is the heaven of light sounds. How do heavenly beings in the heaven of light sounds speak? They speak with light. This is the science of optics that is found even in televisions. In that lines communicate. Heavenly beings in the heaven of light sound do not speak. It is not that they do not communicate, they do so with words. Some drama masters criticize that the heavenly beings in the heaven of light sound do not speak because they have no language or words. That is why they use light to represent language or words. No, if they do not know how to speak, would they not be mutes? How is that better than those who speak? Since those in the heaven of light sound speak using light, it is not useful to be mute there. I say they have language, but they do not need language with words. They use light the way we use optics to write. Something along the lines of optics, it must be that it is not that they just speak with light and there is no language. No, to explain the Buddha Dharma, compare the Buddha Dharma with the secular Dharma so that it is clear. Some other Dharma masters say that there is no language or words in that heaven. Calling heavenly beings in the heavenly light sound muse really shows how these Dharma masters do not understand. This is the second Dhyana heavens. People who meditate and reach the Samadhi of the second Dhyana heaven, the ground of joy from Samadhi, experience a state. What is that? Their breaths stop. This is the state of the second Jhana heaven. Having reached the state of the second Jhana heaven does not mean your skills are most terrific. People who work hard as ask yourselves now, have you reached this level? Did your palms stop? Did your breathing quit during meditation? No. If not, then work hard. If you do not, then you cannot become liberated from birth and death. There is no more birth and death at the first jhana heaven or the second jhana heaven. Hard work does not mean experiencing some minor states such as a vision of Dharma protecting bodhisattvas or some others. Even if we see light during meditation, the state is still insignificant. Do not be attached. Perhaps during meditation, you begin to swing back and forth without wishing to. You do not want to move, but you do. When you do move, you cannot make it stop even if you want to. These are the six forms of earthquake at work, size of the six senses. This is not real skill, so keep moving ahead and strive hard. Until you reach the stage of the first dhyana and the second dhyana, you cannot be lazy. Lazy and you cannot end birth and death, which makes your future quite dangerous. It is not easy to become a monk. Lazy for one day, you dig into their house. 
if you do not want to go to the house then work a bit harder you say i feel uncomfortable as soon as i start to apply myself it is really uncomfortable the houses are even more uncomfortable if you want comfort now you will be uncomfortable in the future if you do some hard work now you will be comfortable in the future count this up and who knows how long you will be in the house there is no leaving the unintermittent house where you suffer there all day why does someone end up suffering there it is because one was very lazy as a novice one did not work hard and did not study the buddha drama so he suffers one can hardly be at ease in the house the heaven of lesser purity the heaven of limitless purity and the heaven of universal purity these are the heavens of the third dhyana the first dhyana is called the ground of bliss from living production the second dhyana is called the ground of bliss from samadhi and the third dhyana is called the ground of wonderful bliss from living joy in the first dhyana the pulse stops in the second dhyana the breath stops and in the third dhyana thoughts stop although the heaven of the mantitos of brahma the heaven of the ministers of brahma and the great brahma heaven of the first dhyana heavens are, are already pure but there is no light yet not only no light but the lights are very dim of the second dhyana heavens there, are, there is light that is more pure than pure. There is another crude analogy that compares this to the floor. The heaven of the Mantitos of Brahma, the heaven of the ministers of Brahma, and the great Brahma heaven are like the floor that has, swept, has been swept once but not yet waxed. Without wax, there is no shine. We are talking in worldly terms about how there is no wax or shade or shine when you wash the floor then it will shine this is the heaven of blessed light the heaven of limitless light and the heaven of light out these are the second dhyana heavens the third dhyana heavens heavens of blessed light is like waxed floor but it needs to be wiped to really shine. There may be some dirt or broom hair that has not been cleaned up and picked up. So there is light, but it is not clean yet. The third dhyana heavens are clean. They are the heaven of lesser purity, the heaven of limitless purity, and the heaven of universal purity. The floor is waxed and wiped until it shines with a bright sheen and there is no dust at all if you do not understand the states in the heavens then you will if you think about this metaphor of a floor pulse moves blood then our pulse stops that is purity if breath stops then there is light of the third dhyana heavens thought stop completely although the pulse stops at the first dhyana heavens but there is still this thought of the second dhyana heavens, this thought did not end either. Of the third dhyana heavens, this thought stopped. He will not let one thought occur and another thought develop. That thought occurs and this thought develops.